You have the nozzle, which is spraying your hot fluid on the periphery of the disc. That's represented by the stream coming in. It comes in and it spirals around and then it comes out the exhaust. Okay, here we have the fluid coming in. So it's essentially running it's kind of dizzy. Off the metal. Out the center. And the reason this, one of the initial questions was efficiency. Is this turbine efficient? Everyone says it's terribly inefficient. Why do they say that? Because they, they've never run it properly. When this turbine happens to be the most efficient turbine in its class. It was documented as, as such back in 1911. They did extensive testing. Yale University was involved. Tesla had his original models tested. And it was sworn in the court record that this turbine was the highest conversion efficiency of any known type of turbine. And that still is the case today. A single stage turbine, a turbine means just having one section, one stage, can, can give you a conversion efficiency, an isotropic, what they call isotropic conversion efficiency, meaning fluid energy in versus shaft energy out of 55%. Okay? A standard coal power plant with a multiple, multiple, multiple stage turbine not just a little single stage device like this, they get about 70% conversion efficiency. So you can see, in a simple little device, you're getting 55%, and there's ways to bring it even higher, which we'll talk about. But just in building a simple device, you're already up to 55% conversion efficiency. So let me finish this one point. And the pump, you're just the opposite. On the pump, you drive the shaft. Instead of the fluid driving the shaft, you actually put a motor on here, and you make a turn, okay? As you make a turn, what happens? Just the opposite, fluid sucked in the center, and then you have the opposite effect, it spirals and comes out as high pressure fluid. And guess what? These pumps can pump solids. But the oil industry, believe it or not, is standardized on this technology. They have actually adapted the pumping, and it's acknowledged to be the finest pump in the world for any money. As a result, they charge big money. There's one company that is making them. I'll pick up the question quick here. Yeah, okay. So the, the fluid, it spirals inward, then it goes out the center. And only on the turbine, right? Yes, if, you're, turbine. if you have high pressure fluid flow and you're driving a shaft, it spirals around and comes now, out the center. On your disc there, I didn't see any entrance uh, ports. Uh, how does the fluid enter into that? Oh, here's the entrance port right here. See it? Center? That's the black, it's the center here. Right, there's a casing around here. This has got a casing around it. It's not just out in the open like this, but it sucks in the center, comes in the spiral to disc, and comes out the periphery and through a standard diffuser. Is there ports on the periphery where it comes out? No, no need for that. This is just plain disc. Is, is there a. This is all it is. Don't overcomplicate it. That's where people get into trouble. In, in that thing, is there a spiral? Uh, Channels in there, or does no? It just happens by you know how they look up at the Milky Way. And you notice where one of the great arms of the spiral that's happening naturally. This is a vortex turbine, like a tornado. This is a it always finds its best place to be. And the faster you run it, the tighter the spiral gets. And as the and as you get the tighter spiral, you have more disc contact with the steam. What happens to the efficiency? Goes up. So the faster you run these the higher the efficiency. And one of the biggest problems in doing testing is they never get it to as rated speed. And this turbine is very unique amongst turbines is it does not produce any significant power until you reach its operating speed. What does the typical RPM have? It depends, the, the RPM depends on the diameter. Something that's like this, but you'd want to run around 30,000 RPM. But if you run it at 20,000 RPM, it might seem like it's going at tremendous speed, but it won't produce any power. Okay, but what happens is, instead of having a nice spiral, what happens is you just get a slippage. It goes right into the, it hits, boom. And it's when you go boom right into the exhaust, you're not going to get any interaction and no power. But a, a conventional turbine doesn't operate like that. And conventional engineers, they don't understand that. So when they do their tests, they're completely confounded. Everything they've been taught about 
doesn't apply to this. So when you're saying it's spiraling, it's actually streams of water which are clinging to the metal because of the adhesion. Adhesion of viscosity, like we showed with the water, right? And, it's, and the faster you turn it, the tighter the spirals, the more interaction, the higher the efficiency. Matter of fact, Dr. Warren Rice of the University of Arizona did extensive testing on this technology, and he claims that the efficiency can be as high as 97% under his testing. But Tesla claimed 98% or even higher. So you can reach, you can almost reach the 100% efficiency with this. But I said they tested them at 55. Why, if they can go to 100, don't you go to 100? Why, why do you sell for 55? What's the problem with going up to those higher efficiencies? Where are parts and speed? No? No, it's a typical explosion of the disc. No, that's not, the explosion of the disc, that's not a problem. Pardon? Materials. Materials aren't not a problem. Why is it that you can get this really high efficiency? But the problem is that those very high efficiency numbers, you won't have power. Because power is a function of the differential of the fluid coming in, its pressure, versus the speed of the disc. That differential is what gives you the power. Okay? If you have this stream coming in, and the disc going the same speed as the stream coming in, are you going to generate any power? No. That's why it's not practical to go to 100% or 90-some percent efficiency. There are ways to boost it higher by recuperation, but a single stage is limited to about 55% mechanical or isotropic efficiency.